uh, which is why does religion have such a persistent hold on human thought despite all that we know of science? Uh, yeah, I think there are several ways one can address that question. I, uh, let me address it in, the, in a... Uh, consider not long ago when so much of the Western world was the state was the religion. And we have actually moved quite a distance from that compared with 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 400 years ago, the era of the Inquisition and this sort of thing. And so, so to say that it has such a grip, it has a fraction of the grip that it once did on the operations of human conduct and of society. So the real question is, if implicit in that is, given what we know of science, why would religion still have any grip at all? Not does, why does it still have a big grip? Because it's not a big grip when you look um, in, the, in the, the developed world. So, in fact, most of Europe are just, they're eight, you know, they're whole countries where religion has essentially disappeared entirely. And the countries are not, the, the countries are not full of violence and, you know, it's just the assumption that you have to be religious to be moral is a false one. It's empirically false because you just look around in places where that's the case. So, um, so, so, so that's one fact. And we pull away from that a little. There's plenty of what goes on in religious texts that has tremendous value to how to think about life and how to treat one another. Uh, in fact, uh, Jefferson created what was essentially what you can think of as the Jeff Thomas Jefferson, the Jefferson Bible. I don't know if you ever heard of this. He went through the Bible, and I think both the Old and the New Testaments, and he crossed off everything that was sort of mythical, magical, uh, things that clearly violated known laws of nature, and kept the rest and said, here is the, the stuff of the Bible that Will, should have value to any modern person going forward. If you look at people who are religious today who are not in conflict with science, they have viewed their religious text as a spiritual, something that gives them spiritual support, not as a science textbook. The, the, inter, the, the conflict in society is when you have those who are still religious who want to use their religious text as their access point to understanding the natural world. And persistent efforts of the past to make that happen have just simply failed. The, the, the Bible does not work as a science textbook. In fact, Galileo knew this, and he himself was a religious man. He's famously quoted as saying, the Bible tells you how to go to heaven, not how the heavens go. <laughs> So on that scale, the, the, the conflict comes about when that subset of the religious community feels threatened by scientific discoveries that are different from how they interpret what should, the natural world should be in the Bible. I think, and, I think it's that point where you get to the concept of the God of the gaps. The, the, you go, we do not understand this. You know, science takes us so far, but we don't understand anything beyond that. Therefore. That's God. The stuff that we don't get, that's God. And the trouble with that is the moment that you actually go, no, we do understand that now. Is people going, well, did God just go away then? And, and it goes back, you know, nice simple things like the rainbow. The point where you go, well, the rainbow actually, it's, it's an optical effect. It's not something magic that gets put up in the sky to memorialize the flood. Plus, did you know that everyone sees a unique rainbow? No. That's right. Um, the rainbow is an optical effect for the person who sees it. So if you stand 10 feet to my left, you see an actual, a different rainbow than I see. It's a remarkable, uh, fun fact about rainbows. My, my, yeah. my, fa my favorite fun fact about rainbows is the fact that they were originally believed to have six color bands, but that Newton added, added indigo and violet. Yeah, Newton just liked, to, he liked, he liked his seven. the number seven. He had yeah. a mystical feeling for the number seven throws in indigo that no one else sees. Yeah, nobody, I mean, yeah. hands up here, who actually goes, indigo, violet, there's the indigo. You yeah, don't, yeah. you just go purple. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> go exactly. blue, purple. But, 
Oh, so another thing about the rainbow, because each rainbow is unique to the viewer, it can only be a rainbow that is exactly face on to you. You've never seen a rainbow that was like at an oblique angle. Think about it. They're exactly hemispherical in front of you. That's why you can never get to the base of the rainbow. Because that would mean your perspective on it would change. That's what makes it a good place to hide the gold. Okay? <laughs> in case you didn't know. All right. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you outing yourself here as an unbeliever in leprechaun? <laughs> People I have been burned at stakes. For indeed that. am. <laughs> um, and uh, another thing, just to, you mentioned the God of the gaps. In, in a free society, a free pluralistic society, where the freedom of the expression of religion is constitutionally protected, which is a fundamental part of why America was so attractive to immigrants from around the world whose religious differences were not being supported in their hometown, I will never be one to tell you what you should believe or what you should not believe. What I will say is that if you want to say that where we don't understand things, that's where God rests, that's where God operates, the God of the gaps argument, because I get asked that all the time. What was around before the universe? I don't know. Must have been something, God. So they got to stick in God where we're not there yet. And I just say, well, I got, we got top people working on that. That's, <laughs> It's a current frontier. We're not there yet. And given the history of the moving frontier, where people had previously said, well, God must be operating, we're long past that. We, those explanations have come. And so I, I don't, there's no compelling reason to say God did it and then sort of give up and go on to the next problem. My issue with the God of the gaps is that if you feel that way, you should not be writing the science curriculum of a classroom, okay? That's all, okay? Because if you do, you are undermining the very process of what science is all about. Because the God of the Gaps principle is like a, it's a philosophy of ignorance, whereas science is a philosophy of discovery. And that's an important distinction between the two. And if you remove that foundation for what builds science, you are undermining the capacity of your culture, of your nation, to compete technologically in this, the 21st century. So it is not without consequence to have conduct of that way. There you go.